Hey everyone, welcome to The Totally Well Show. I'm your host, Joyce Strong. The Totally Well Show is a place where we get curious, ask questions, and explore everything to do with health, wellness, fitness, personal development, helping people, and all the things it takes to help you live a strong, joyous life. I'm here today with Nina Stout. Hi, Nina. Hi, Joyce. Thanks um, for having me. Oh, you're welcome. I'm so excited. We've done a lot of collaborations together, and, um, and here's yet another one here in person, which is my favorite way to do it. Yes. I want to tell my guests a little bit about you, if that's okay. Thank you. So Nina is a functional nutritionist, and she has her own practice at simplewellness.com, S-Y-M-P-L-E, wellness.com. Um, I met her because she's a medical science liaison for Zymogen, and that's X Y M O M O. I want to put a G Z in there. G, uh, G E N uh, dot com, and um, also a certified personal trainer. And I've seen you get so jacked this summer with your pictures, right? <laughs> Thanks. You've been working on. Yeah, it. <laughs> I can see you look so awesome. I Thank saw you, you in your bikini shot, and I was oh, like, Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah, Thank yeah, you. you look great. All the muscles. I love, love the muscles. Go. Yeah. <laughs> so um, today we're going to talk about um, uh, detoxification, the whole process of detoxification. Um, oh, by the way, and th so people can reach out to you through your website. They'll be able to connect with you, social yes. media, all that. Yes, Everything's exactly. Yep. Okay, good. Yep, simple wellness. I like to ask that up, up front. So anyway, let's start talking about um, detoxification, what that means, and um, how we can help people with that. Okay, perfect. So I kind of like to come about it from the perspective of um, the uh, Institute for Functional Medicine. It's actually, I'm getting my master's in nutrition and functional medicine right now. Oh, wow, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. so um, one class at a time. I'm five classes in, and... Um, uh, again, it's a, it's University of Western States, but they're connected with the Institute for Functional Medicine. And Institute for Functional Medicine is the um, kind of brainchild behind the 5R protocol, which is um, uh, essentially a gut, you know, restoration, gastrointestinal tract. Well, since you mentioned it, let's yes. discuss discuss what the 5Rs are. <laughs> yes, for sure. Yeah, so it's for basically supporting gastrointestinal health. But so the, the, the 5Rs, the first R is remove and I want to say that's kind of a, a big place where you look at the detoxification component so mm -hmm. I, I'll definitely get into that um, and then the second R is replace mm -hmm. so you're replacing things like maybe digestive enzymes or um, bile salts or um, immunoglobulins things that a healthy GI mm -hmm. tract will normally produce but mm -hmm. maybe if there's you know disease or some kind of unwell um, situation um, imbalance that the GI tract isn't producing the or you know even pancreatic enzymes stuff like that so you have to replace for a little bit until the system is restored um, then there's reinoculate and I just recently through my class heard that they're changing that to restore that's the, the third R but it's kind of where you're um, I believe like restoring function and restoring the initial or the the sort of the native um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. microbiota, you know, so yeah. you might replace uh, or you might support with some um, probiotics and yeah. things like that, right? Oh, I like that change. I think that is more clear. <laughs> right? Yeah. So it's not re-inoculate. I think it's restore. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, um, then you have repair, which may be kind of giving support to those uh, cells along the GI tract called enterocytes. And so that might be um, know, things like L-glutamine and, and certain nutrients like that that help feed those cells and support their, their health, okay? okay? And then there's rebalance, and that's just kind of actually has to do with like, may even have to do with rebalancing overall lifestyle in order to yeah. support yeah. continued homeostasis or balance. That's so. helpful, and it just makes me think I need to take a step back to really um, help people who are who are confused about what de what we mean by detoxification. So the first time I heard the word detox, I thought of alcohol detox. If somebody right. has a drug or alcohol problem, and that's oh. one way that people detoxify. Um, what we're talking about today is a nutritional or metabolic detoxification. Yeah. It often gets confused with the word cleanse. Right. And people think of it as cleaning out their colon, mm -hmm. um, pooping and just, and not that that isn't part of it, but we're not literally just trying to empty or scrape out your colon 
or your your system. That's not what this is at all. Right. This Unlike isn't about a not eating fast or a right. Right, liquid only plan or something like yeah, that. Yeah, right. you definitely in the kind of detoxification we're talking about with these five R's, we're really talking about. Um, helping the system to get back to its most healthy state, but we're not starving it, we're not taking food away. That's a great point. And one of my beloved mentors, Eve Clues, she, the late Eve Clues actually, she was an amazing force behind um, a lot of uh, the work that, um, she's a functional nutritionist in Florida, and one of the founding board members of Zymogen, and she would lecture um, wonderfully on detoxification. And she would always say, Detox is a nutrient-dense process. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nutrient-dense. Nutrient-dense yeah. process, right. Yeah. So you need the micronutrients, you know, for sort of uh, the, one of the, the beginning phases of, of detox, phase one, you know, where you're kind of pulling toxins from tissues and cells. And so that might be, you know, all of the vitamins and minerals and things like that um, that are supporting um, those those processes. And then phase two, the second phase, where the liver really needs a lot of... Um, uh, methyl donors and uh, sulfur and um, things that support the different conjugation pathways. Um, so let's take a step back yes. there because you get you're so <laughs> we're technical. getting lost in the yeah no I want I want you to go there and I love it because you have that knowledge but and I have trouble actually with explaining the phases of the liver and um, and how if we can if you could help me with explaining it very simply to people that as simple as possible about um, that the, there's a process the liver um, goes through to handle the nutrients that come into your body and to take things out that it doesn't need. And there, and there are things called phases. Right, exactly. And it's basically a matter of just making um, you know, the toxins uh, water soluble so that they can be... So there's be... three phases? Um, there, there are, yeah, there is a third phase as well. Right? So first but phase, they're taking... It, right, we're basically removing the toxins from from cells and tissues, and we're, we're making them water-soluble. But right? first, they become, they're fat-soluble, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's not good to stop there. No, it's not good to stop in just phase one, because then the, the um, toxic, potentially toxic um, metabolites of, um, you know, the various... Uh, components that we're trying to remove from the body can recirculate, but the liver actually needs to um, bind uh, or they, it needs to make those toxins available to be excreted through basically urine and feces, like so you were saying. So making water so, so we need to take those fat-soluble toxins. Yeah, well, there's the six, there's six different methods for making those toxins available. Uh, for removing them from the body. Okay. So it's it's through sulfation and methylation and like for instance like estrogen. You need methylation to um, to remove estrogen from the body. So it's there's certain um, phases that will um, uh, help with different types of toxins. So mm -hmm. um, you know the, the key thing though is that we need to really help um, help, um, it's one of the remove um, aspects, right, that we were talking about with the 5R program, mm -hmm. is what the liver is doing and what our, um, our cytochrome, P4, uh, cytochrome enzymes are doing and things like that. But um, I like to look at it as just kind of one piece is what those nutrients are doing. The mm -hmm. other things that we kind of re need to remove and that we, we, we look at in a detox protocol is certain foods that are, you know, and even different compounds that are coming into the body. Mm -hmm. Those are things that kind of need to be removed so that there's less um, burden, right, on the liver so as when, well. So, so what so. you're talking about using remove there is it, 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 the liver is doing its job biochemically to remove things, but you're saying don't eat it. There are certain, certain things, things that are that just going to make it really hard for yeah. the body to to rid um, the system of, of accumulated toxins yeah. because there's, um, um, say for instance, somebody has, I mean, I know it's kind of one of those things that people hear over and over again, but the gluten sensitivity, you know, if someone is sensitive to gluten, it is going to create an inflammatory process in the body that is going to put extra stress on the body and make it difficult for, you know, the, the liver to do its job in, in removing, um, you know, toxins that, that are, you know, and even just excess, you know, estrogen, like I was saying. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so part of a, a detox program actually looks at removing certain 
foods and chemicals and things like that as so well. So not necessarily forever, but for now. Right, for a period this, of time. Right. We're taking so. something out to decrease the burden on the liver so we can do a better job. Exactly. And even if you're not like celiac, you might consider right. removing They're some, right. You yeah. know, I mean, there's gluten sensitivity even if a person isn't celiac or even if a person has no reactivity to gluten, um, sometimes it's good to remove it because not everybody's eating um, like organic mm -hmm. wheat, let's say, right? And so um, we know that there's a lot of chemicals and pesticides and things like that in conventional farming, right? right. That may affect um, what's coming in with the wheat, right? And so we know, say for instance, glyphosate. Many people have heard of glyphosate. It's one of the active compounds in Roundup. And that, you know, when you're eating more of a conventional diet can kind of be more abundant, right? Mm -hmm. Coming through the diet. And that can affect the uh, GI tract cells, the enterocytes that we were talking about before, right? Mm -hmm which we rely on to help with detox as well. Mm -hmm. um, there, that's actually where a lot of phase one detox occurs. The cytochrome P5, P450 enzymes actually are in the you know cells in the GI tract. So anyway, we want those cells to be healthy, right? Mm -hmm. And so in terms of, um, the removing potentially problematic foods, you know, corn can be, you know, um, either something that uh, people are sensitive to or allergic to potentially. So that's frequently one of the things that we look at in the detox protocol as a remove item. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, I mean, I spent a lot of time um, going as kind of a right hand person for an integrative um, medical practitioner a couple of different couple of years actually, and I did all of her detox. Um, uh, protocols and training with her patients. So mm -hmm. I have a lot of experience with kind of going through um, with patients explaining kind of right why we do the detox, how it's not a cleanse, how it's not a fast and what have you, and how it's also not only are we giving them good nutrition mm -hmm. in certain supplements, we are structurally removing certain foods. So again, I mentioned the corn, I mentioned the, the um, wheat and um, you know, dairy is frequently on that list. And mm -hmm. all right, I'll go through the things to remove before I tell you how I really explain it. But I mean, you know, cause it can be scary to someone to be like, okay, well, you know, for your health, we're just gonna take a break from these things. Maybe it's for a week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks is usually max. But you know, it's like alcohol and sugar and usually coffee, not always all caffeine. I mean, a lot of times green tea is kind of a very beneficial thing in the mm -hmm. detox, you know, because uh, it has a lot of great compounds um, that are great for mood and also it's a lot of polyphenols and things like that that support um, health and, and, um, and anti-inflammatory processes. Um, so what else? Usually peanuts, because they can be sort of pro-inflammatory. They can um, have some mold. Um, Toxicity, mm -hmm. right? Aflatoxin, that's a problem for a lot of people understand that mold is a problem. So peanuts can be potentially an issue. Um, I think I said sugar, alcohol, anyway. Do you do all legumes or just peanut? A lot of times people think peanuts are not and they're not, they're legumes. They're legumes, right. Do you recommend? Not necessarily. Yeah. That's getting into kind of a different topic with lectins and and that makes it a lot harder for a um, for um, vegans who rely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, is as a first pass, those are kind of the you know I don't know eight to ten things. Um, I could go through them, but instead, what I'll do is just say what I frequently will suggest to a, a, a person who's sort of thinking about this for the first time is like, I kind of try to lay their fears and say, it's really more about crowding out with the beneficial healthy things, right? Yeah, so I, yeah. I sometimes don't even go through that list of what they can't have, right? Yeah. It's kind of like lots of vegetables and especially above ground leafy, you so know, really vegetables. So really focusing on what Right, what they can, can have eat. and yeah. get them kind of excited about that, you know? And, um, you know, low glycemic fruits are best. Um, really any fruit is okay, but mm -hmm. not too much on, you know, the bananas and the mangoes and papayas and things that are high glycemic index. So, because um, a lot of times people who are looking to sort of cleanse and do a detox, they're looking to sort of jumpstart a um, weight loss protocol as well, frequently. Mm -hmm. And just, I want to jump in, I hope it's okay. Yeah. I want to just jump in when, again, some of the technical terms you use because you're so advanced in this, I just want to bring it back to when you hear high glycemic, we're talking about sugar. So um, Things that really spike insulin. Yeah, that spike your insulin. Mm -hmm. Insulin is a hormone and insulin is responsible for fat storing. It's, it's responsible for dealing with the, the sugar in your blood. So if you're having a lot of fruit, it can actually 
interfere with weight loss if yeah, you talk about sure. weight loss, yeah. but also it's just another form of sugar. In the end, the body sees it as sugar. That's true, right, that's true. And you know, the, the form of sugar in fruit is fructose, and some people have a fructose intolerance issue, mm -hmm. and that can cause bloating and you know, different issues too if they're right. eating too much. Yeah. So we just kind of, the low glycemic index fruits would be more like the berries, you know, yeah. um, typically any kind of berry is, is always you know, a good way to go, and usually it's a handful, not a whole you know, pint or whatever, so it's yeah. somewhat about portion control too. So yeah. anyway, you've got the lots of good you know, fruits, and I, I usually recommend a half to three quarters of the plate, you know, in, mm -hmm. in vegetables, yeah, yeah. you know, and so maybe a quarter of the plate in um, whole grains if, if uh, the practitioner or the patient, you know, does okay with grains and the practitioner is okay with recommending grains to the patient. Some, you know, there's a big, you know, low, very low carb diet craze, so, yeah, you know, yeah. some practitioners uh, would prefer that their patients or clients be grain free for a little bit, but in any case, um, whole grains can be really good for the good bugs in the gut so um, yeah. you know what I really like what I'm hearing is is this emphasis and in the end what I'd like people to take away today is if you're evaluating a detox plan how do you know it's a good one and how do you know it's right for you so we're, we're hopefully going to give you some parameters on how to make your own decision because we want you to be um, we want to advocate for you and make you be autonomous to be able to make these decisions because we know you can um, and also how very important it is to personalize it. So um, I did a thing this morning, just a quick 60 second thing on intermittent fasting. And what I said is, depends. It depends on what your goals are. Yeah. It might be good, it might not be. Mm -hmm. I use it, yes, but I have specific goals and reasons. But if you came to me and you weren't metabolically solid at that point, that you were you know, ha having hypoglycemic episodes yeah, and things like sure. that, yeah. I might start you off with something very different mm -hmm. than what your friend is doing or what you thought you read in a magazine. Right, right. So I love that you're, you're really answering that um, or speaking to that personalization. Personalization, yes. Yeah, working with your coach, your practitioner. Correct. Um, and really understanding your goals and making them match up. So not one size doesn't fit all, although the no. framework may be similar. That's true. Yeah, it's always good to have a framework to yeah. go from. But yeah. Um, yeah, and I think that um, generally that framework is some of those, you know, pretty typical remove items because we know that they can potentially be problematic. I call them the the um, the most likely suspects. I do too. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. We don't know, but that's they're, right. That's they're right. The ones that have a been lot of people before. they you know they do take gluten out of the diet, and for the first time, you know, their joints don't ache, or mm -hmm. you know, they have regular you know um, bowel movements, or they you know they they cut out dairy, and they can't believe that their nose isn't running anymore, mm -hmm. you know, and just things like that. So yeah. it's kind of a break. It kind of slows things down for people to kind of get in touch a little bit more with what their body's telling them. Um, one of the the things in addition to you know removing certain foods um, is um, you know if you use kind of a there's so many detox programs out there but a lot of them do include like a nutrient dense you know vegan hypoallergenic protein type shake right mm -hmm. definitely want one without any sugar um, my company has a, a great one that I love um, and most people do very well with it but um, uh, so these generally have a protein and they have nutrients, vitamins and minerals yeah, and things. Yeah, those micronutrients that we were talking about plus um, right, additional support for you know, the different phases of the, the liver detox and things so like that. So when you're evaluating, when you're saying is this one or this one, how come this one costs more? What? So we're looking for purity, we're looking yep. for quality, um, and right. we're looking for not sugar added. Right. You want to make sure you really understand a lot of these a lot of companies I've seen, you know, it's very, it's unclear really what's contained in it, you know, it, per, perhaps before you buy it, right? And yeah. then when you buy it, the label's got to tell you what's in it. But, um, you know, it's like you want to know what kind of protein is actually um, part of the, you know, main composition of the of the shake. Um, a lot of them are, you know, pea protein, maybe rice protein. Um, there's new, um, there's different collagen shakes and pumpkin seed protein is a new one, which is kind of exciting. But um, usually a general rule of thumb is they probably have about 25 grams of protein and mm -hmm. um, could be a meal replacement. It could be alongside, um, you know, some uh, maybe a lower calorie meal. But um, 
One thing that I like about programs that incorporate a shake like that is because when you kind of are explaining um, to a client or a patient that they're going to make all these different changes with their food, it can be really overwhelming and confusing. And it's really nice if they know that they can say like, okay, I'm going to get up and have my shake. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. 250 calories, 25 grams of protein. And, you know, that's a good sort of like, I don't have to think too much about it. Maybe have that with some green tea or whatever. Yeah. Um, and that's nice because what a lot of people are replacing in the morning is what? I mean, it's not a lot of nutrient-dense food, right? You have a lot of, again, that high glycemic term we're talking about, that high sugar, starchy foods that turn to, you know, glucose sugar very quickly, spike blood sugar. And so, um, so it's nice if you can kind of take that guesswork out of it and say, this is this, you know, make it as sort of just routine as possible for them. What is some of the nutrients I'll look for in in a shake like this that would um, be, you know, so I'm expecting to see a good amount of vitamins, yeah. um, methylated B12 right, and right. methylated folate. I look yeah. for things like that. Lots of That's good a activated good sign. B vitamins, yeah, those right, are the, niacin, Those are the bioavailable, yeah, yeah, and in a good a por- proportion. So I'm like, okay, this company obviously paid more money because mm-hmm. those are more expensive. But then what are some of the right. detox support uh, words or nutrients that might be in a shake like that? Yeah. Um, so like N-acetylcysteine is definitely a big one. Um, yeah. Sounds like a mouthful, but um, it's a, a sulfur-based um, amino acid that's a um, precursor uh, to glutathione, which okay. is the master antioxidant. Okay. So that's really going to be supportive for liver detoxification mm-hmm. in a big way. So N-acetylcysteine is definitely a big one. Um, then different herbal compounds, you know, um, elagic acid is, a, is one that a lot of companies use. That's from pomegranate. Mm-hmm. Um, we all know pomegranate's very um, important for health, but it's mm-hmm. got a lot of polyphenols. Um, and, um, you know, green tea, again, is, is very um, beneficial. It's uh, also a lot of polyphenols. Um, you know, a meth- a methylation support, methyl donors, again, you said the methylated B vitamins, mm-hmm. um, uh, sodium sulfate. Um, what else? Let's see. Um, one that um, is interesting is uh, like a calcium deglucurate, or, um, and that's basically helpful for estrogen metabolism in the body. Mm-hmm. Um, so those are some key ones. And then the, uh, the chelated minerals are important as well. Mm-hmm. And so again, like you said, yes, companies will pay more for that uh, higher quality uh, activated vitamins as well as the activated or chelated minerals, which are... So you might see the mineral, oh, this says magnesium and this says magnesium, but they're not the same form. So one would be beneficial, one would not be. Right. Most of the chelated minerals, they're, they're chelated with glycinate. So it's the magnesium glycinate form or zinc glycinate form. And Got that um, is a lot more tolerable. So mm-hmm. some people are familiar with sort of like a you know, minerals may be upsetting, you know, to their, to their, their stomach or they might get nauseous. If they're, gly- uh, if they're chelated, they're a lot easier on the, um, and they're doing the job. digestive process. I think of it like, all right, you can pay $10 they're, for this thing that doesn't help you at all and might actually make you sick, mm-hmm. or you can pay $15 for this that, um, so it's, you, it's hard to compare just by price because you're not comparing the same thing. Yeah, that's yeah. that's exactly right. Yeah. yeah, and it's hard to know. I and mean, oftentimes really. too, I see people pay more money for the thing that is lower quality because the labels are prettier. Or the marketing <laughs> is. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Which is why it's really important for you know um, people to you know work with a trusted coach or a nutritionist mm-hmm. or a practitioner that they feel comfortable with because yeah. it gets so overwhelming. And, and that's one of the reasons I was really excited to have you on the show because I I, I believe in really helping helping to strengthen people to be as autonomous as people want to be autonomous right and giving them the tools they need to evaluate and make the best choices and then when they want to dive deeper they can you know work with us work with coaches and get get um, nowhere here on the sidelines whether they're working intensely or just I need some supplement review yeah um, so. but like you said I mean a lot of times you know people are spending money on products that they think are good you know just because mm-hmm. they look pretty right and it's like and it, I feel you know I feel for people because you go into at the health food store or wherever you know online or whatever and it's just it's very it's very overwhelming so you're spending money maybe on things that 
aren't the most effective and maybe you're spending your time too so if you can you know if they could partner just temporarily or initially yeah. right with a coach to just get pointed in the right direction and then check back in when they need to or they're ready to take things to a deeper level yeah and, and oftentimes too they'll get that far and they'll they will never try it again because they didn't think it worked I just want to give you a heads up we have about three minutes left Perfect. to talk about detox so um, whatever you want to get whatever in. else we want to do yeah. okay okay perfect so um, yeah I mean it's it's important to you know it, there are some programs that can be I don't know I guess maybe a little bit more mm, people are afraid right when they they hear detox that they might have a lot of symptoms right and they mm -hmm. might have a lot of like what we kind of call in the in the work that we do, a healing crisis, right? Mm -hmm. Where they feel like they're they're worried, right? Oh my gosh, am I going to spend all the, the time in the bathroom, right? I'm, I'm working, I can't, right? Yeah. I can't afford to be running to the bathroom all day long or whatever it is, or I'm taking care of my kids. I can't, you know, afford to not feel well. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, most of the programs are the, one of the, the main programs that, that I know and love and that a lot of practitioners I work with love is, is very gentle, you know, and yeah. again, it does incorporate that foundational protein, you know, shake with all the, the nutrients. Um, but I get great, you know, feedback. It's kind of like, oh, my brain fog lifted, and my skin looked better, and you know, um, I had more, you know, regular um, elimination, you know. Mm -hmm. But they don't feel like, oh, I, I felt terrible, and I had that healing crisis, you yeah. know. So any tea talks I've done of quality, I've always immediately felt better. Oh, good. <laughs> I, <laughs> okay. I I don't get this, you know, when people. I just think maybe they're not doing it correctly because I, I feel better day one. And again, maybe it's because what we were talking about at the beginning, you know, it's a it's a nutrient dense process. Yeah. So if I'm you're eating, giving I'm yourself I'm doing, the yeah. proper nutrition yeah. and um, and supporting with some, you know, again, targeted sort of nutritional intervention, you know, with enough protein and things like that. Um, that that it's kind of a balanced process, you know, yeah. and yeah. Um, yeah, so you know, I usually hear sleep is better and things like that. So um, it's always nice to um, this is another topic, but you know, include a probiotic in with that detox protocol. And um, yeah, so you know, it, it, I think it's it's great if you can have some some tools, you know, that supplement so that you're not concerned about am I getting the right amount of protein? Am I yeah, getting the have, right amount? Yeah, you of, have us. A, a little security blanket there, yeah. just having, making sure that, yeah. that you're leaving no gas. So, right. So I think, you know, going to a trusted, you know, company, um, but maybe before that, going to a trusted professional that mm -hmm. can guide you toward that company mm -hmm. and help you with um, just some initial tips and tricks to get you through and take away some of that, you know, fear and concern of how is this going to go, you know. Yeah, it's truly an investment in, um, Absolutely, but it doesn't have to be, you know, expensive. A lot of um, coaches and, and nutritionists do group programs, yeah. and that's a really nice way to do a detox program. Yeah, because then you buddy up with people. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, um, I'm, I'm going to uh, wrap up because we're, we're done with the show, um, but I just want to remind people, Nina Stout, and it is Simple Wellness, simple with a Y, S-Y-M-P-L-E, wellness.com. And um, you can f uh, find our social media connections there. And I urge you to reach out. Um, I think you, like me, love to get questions and DMs and find Absolutely. ways that we can help. So please reach out to us. And, of course, me at Total Well Coach. So. Thank you. Nina, mm -hmm. thanks for coming today. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. It was fun. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. <laughs>